guys, so you know smart homes, I absolutely love them. And if you've been keeping tabs with the videos recently, I've been looking into Apple's HomeKit due to recent frustration with my old smart home setup. Now something unworldly happened. JME, who is a MC here in the UK. YouTube.com forward slash man and I'll rack up the bait. You can't test me in the music game, I got bare XP. Actually got in touch with me saying that he watches and loves the videos and he actually sent me a Christmas present which is the basis of this very video. So with that being said, buckle up because this one's all about the Apple smart home. So, what is HomeKit and how do HomeKit devices actually work? Now, Apple don't usually want people to know the nitty gritty of how things work because, well, it ruins the Apple magic, doesn't it? Well, don't worry because in this video, I'm basically going to explain everything you need to know about HomeKit. HomeKit is a framework that allows you to bring your devices from different manufacturers all together into one place. For example, if you've got lights from let's say Philips Hue and LifeX, they can exist and work both seamlessly together under the one Apple ecosystem. HomeKit will work on or with your iPhone, your iPad or a Mac computer. You need these to actually view the home interface specifically. Now, the main problem with HomeKit is because it works, let's say, on your iPhone, if you leave home, your smart home at home will fall apart. Furthermore, if you're out of the house and your smart home is set up on your iPhone, you won't be able to control any of your devices at home. So if you've left your lights on, you're pretty much out of luck. Now, don't worry, there is a workaround for both of these issues. You need to get yourself what's called a HomeKit hub. Now, I can hear you on the other side of the screen saying, Alex, what's a HomeKit hub and do Apple sell them? Yes, they do, but they are built inside of specific Apple devices. We've got an Apple TV here. These have HomeKit hubs inside of them, as well as the brand new HomePod mini that is also a wirelessly connected HomeKit hub. Now, if you don't have access to either of these devices, you can leave an iPad at home plugged into its charger and that will act as a HomeKit hub. So if you're out of the house, you can control the devices in the house. Okay, so let's talk about the four different ways that devices can connect to HomeKit. The first is Wi-Fi. You've got examples like these LifeX lights here in my kitchen. Other examples would be, let's say, the smart TVs that I've got around the house. They all connect to the internet via the Wi-Fi connection in this house and then to HomeKit. The second way is demonstrated by these lights behind me from Philips Hue and this motion sensor here from Acara. These devices use what's called a bridge to interface with your network and a bridge looks a little something like this. Bridged devices often work better than Wi-Fi devices because they're not relying on your home's Wi-Fi and that's why quite often you'll hear people with Philips Hue say it just works. The third way that HomeKit works is over Bluetooth and it's, to be honest with you, a less than stellar experience. I'll explain why. Bluetooth has, number one, a really short range. Number two, it's very unresponsive and doesn't carry much data. Number three, HomeKit devices that use Bluetooth and that are also battery powered, if they're not used for a period of time, they'll actually put themselves into a sleep mode, which means they're pretty much inoperable. So it's honestly not what you'd want for a smart home. Now, the fourth way is the latest way, the best way, the new way. It's through a protocol called Thread. And it's what this video is all about. Thread is backed by loads of huge companies and over the next coming years, I think it's gonna be the basis of most modern smart homes. So you're probably thinking, Alex, what in the world has this got to do with JME sending you a smart switch? Well, in fact, absolutely everything. But before we get to this, just a quick word from our sponsor. Huge thanks to Klarna for sponsoring this video. With Klarna, you can get a Google Chrome extension that once you're at checkout, automatically applies any coupons or cashback that it can find, all automatically. Klarna has partnered with over a quarter million merchants to make sure your online shopping experience is seamless across your favorite online shops. Let's say you want something, but right now, isn't the best time for you to be spending your money. Relatable, right? Well, if you've got Klarna installed, you can basically buy now and pay later across countless websites and checkouts. 
And you can also use their one-time cards and it gets even better than that. Well, Klarna will let you split the payment into three interest-free payments to make it a little easier on your bank account or you could pay 30 days later. Klarna also has a really cool mobile app that allows you to log in, manage your account, track your purchases, set price alerts on saved items, and browse exclusive deals, and even earn rewards with every purchase. Now, if this sounds like something that you'd be interested in, you can visit the link in the description, or just go to klarna.com forward slash techflow to install Klarna on any device. And thanks to Klarna for sponsoring this video. Now, it's really, really cool that HomeKit works, obviously as advertised, but one thing I get really fed up with doing is using my voice to control certain things around my smart home. Introduce what's called a HomeKit remote. These are basically little remotes that can control things in HomeKit like playing music out of a HomePod, turning on and off lights, activating scenes, etc, etc. We actually demonstrated in our last Apple Smart Home video, which was about the Acara ecosystem, a little smart switch which came with the Acara hub, and it had three programmable buttons on it. And for a few months, I was using it in here explicitly to control my kitchen lights. Then, JME sent me this little Wemo switch. It's called the Wemo Stage, and it is a scene controller for HomeKit. Now, the one problem with this is two months ago, when it arrived, it was only compatible via Bluetooth. And like I've said, Bluetooth sucks. Two days ago, I updated this via the HomeKit app, and it brought with it thread support. So now, this is the first HomeKit controller that supports Thread, and my God, is it responsive. It works really, really well. With the previous protocols, both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, they're not scalable. So that means the more Wi-Fi devices you add, the slower your Wi-Fi network becomes. Exactly the same with the Bluetooth protocol. Thread sort of flips this on its head by being its own mesh network that's scalable. What do I mean by that? Well, the more thread devices that you add to your network, the more stable the thread network becomes because thread devices can connect through other thread devices back to the thread hub, which in my case is the HomePod Mini. It self heals, which is absolutely awesome. And it's what smart homes need. They need to be able to fix themselves without the users having to go in and tamper, which in my experience completely takes away from the smart home that you're trying to create. The other thing that I love about Thread is that it's very, very quick to respond. Now, prior to this weekend, when this Wemo stage controller was configured over Bluetooth before its update, it was very, very slow to respond, requiring you to click it once to wake the actual controller up, and then a second press to actually activate the light, device, or scene that you had assigned to the button. Whereas you can see now with Thread, it really is as simple as just clicking the button. And I can spam this controller and it will work every single time. Not to mention the improved battery life that comes along with this being running on thread. Welcome to Mars Manor. This is my home kit home that I'm currently building whilst testing out different accessories like this stage controller. Now, if we navigate here over to kitchen, go over to Wemo stage, which is this little remote, and go in the settings, we can see what we can configure. Now on this page, you can see that we've got three buttons here, button one, two, and three, and each button on this device has three separate modes. So in my kitchen here, the bottom single click turns all the lights off, the top single click turns all the lights on, and the middle single click sets all the lights to night mode, which they're on, but just really dim. I've got some other things set up with this scene controller. If I double tap the top button, it turns on my festival lights in the garden, and if I hold the bottom button, it goes ahead and turns them off. Again, the TV in here, compatible with HomeKit. Double click the bottom button, and it turns off the TV. Now, just for demonstration purposes, let's configure the long press of button two. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose here, go to kitchen, and I'm gonna choose my dining table light, which is here. And what we're gonna have it do is set this light to, let's say, blue and 100%. And then all I've gotta do is click done. Now that is configured. So if I am to hold this middle button, this light should turn blue, just like that. Now, like I mentioned earlier, Apple love their Apple magic. They don't like people really knowing the nitty gritty about how things are working, which almost does them a little bit more harm than good because after I applied the software update to this, I was none the wiser as to whether this was still using Bluetooth 
or thread. Now, after resetting this device and reconfiguring it, I was able to see that it was using thread. But Alex, how? Now, if you go to the App Store on your phone and type in Eve, you'll be able to download the Eve app. Now, this is really cool whether you're into HomeKit or not, because it allows you to see all of your devices, but actually see into the back end. We can click here and click on Thread Network, and we can see here that our Wemo stage is an endpoint and connected through Thread. Now, I'm really excited for the future of Thread. Like I said at the start of the video, I think this is going to be the basis of most modern smart homes going forward. And I'm counting down the days until manufacturers jump on board with this and actually release end products that are compatible with Thread. I'm hoping one day this year, I'll be able to replace all of my 12 LED strips in this kitchen that currently use Wi-Fi to Thread so they will, well, free up my Wi-Fi network and hopefully respond that little bit faster. I know Nanoleaf are jumping on the trend already and I think they already have some smart bulbs that support thread which I'm going to order as soon as I turn this camera off. But with that being said guys, this has been a HomeKit 101 now with thread support enabled. I hope you've enjoyed and I hope you've learned something a little bit more than you were at the start of this video anyway. My name's been Alex, this has been TechFlow, we'll see you in the next one. Peace.